Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we are going to be showing you how you can actually take your uh, player spellcasting states one step further and actually turn it into a basic healing ability. What I mean by that, if you took a look at the last video you see, we actually managed to keybind the Z key to this little ability that we were doing, well not ability but casting animation that we can do that just throws the hand up in the air. However, as of right now there's no functionality, no particle effect or any of that good stuff and that is exactly what I want to be doing in today's video. So without further ado let's go ahead and get started. So we've set up all of our animation stuff already so we won't need to be touching that any further in today's video. However a couple of things that I do want to do however is I want to make sure the player is not able to move while they're casting that animation and I also want to make sure that they're not able to use that casting animation twice at once. So we're just going to be doing a bit of conditioning around there um, and just tidying it all up so first things first go into your character blueprint and then inside of here we're gonna pretty much take a look at what we've got already and then we're just gonna break that down and then set up a new thing now one thing that I do want to do before I go any further as well is I actually want to set up my key binding properly because as of right now inside of my blueprint for the character we just have the Z um, the Z key key bound inside of there and it's not the most efficient way of doing things instead what we're going to be doing is going into our project settings and and opening it up in that way. So as soon as my third person character loads up and my engine unfreezes we can get straight into that. So that's all good let's go into our uh, project settings real quick so just go to edit in the top left hand corner and then just go to project settings and then once that's open you just want to open up your inputs and inside of the inputs we're just going to create a couple of abilities now with our player we're actually going to give them a couple of different abilities going through one through nine so we've got to set each and every single one of those up so go to input left hand side and then it's action mappings that we're after and then what we're going to do is just create a whole bunch of these just keep pressing the plus icon a couple of times until you get loads of these so first one is going to be ability one second one is going to be ability two third one is going to be ability three make sure you've got all of these numbers numbered as well next one is going to be ability four ability five Ability 6, Ability 7, just keep going through and adding all of these. We need a couple more of these, so I'm going to create 1 and 2, so, whoops, sorry, don't, we don't want those ones, press the wrong icon there, so add 1, 2, so that's Ability 9 and Ability 8, Ability 8, and Ability nine lastly so that is pretty much everything we need to do for our inputs in here so we can go ahead and close this now and that will actually let us reference them from a third person character now so what i'm going to do then is i'm going to right click and i'm actually going to set up my healing ability to ability one so type in ability one and you can see we've got action events here for now bear in mind it's not actually key bound to anything but that's something that we'll sort out in a moment so on the pressed event, we're going to take a look at this and we're going to add a few bits to it. So first things first, you can go, it goes, you can see it goes straight into casting the one handed animation. That's not something that we want to do. Instead, what we want to do from the pressed is quickly run a branch and check to see whether or not the ability is already true. So the way we're going to do that is get a reference to casting one handed, drop that into the condition there. And then if it is true, we don't want it to do anything. We're just going to leave it and let it run. If it isn't true, so if they're not casting, from there, what we're going to do is then tell it to set uh, or even check to see whether or not the player's actually got enough mana. So what I'm going to do is from that, run another branch then. And then the condition for this is going to be float less than or equal to and this is where we actually set up, um, you know, our mana system. So we've actually got the variable for the mana already. And this is just going to take away some of the mana if the player has got enough. So this way, by doing the branch, if they don't have enough mana, it's just not going to run the ability. So grab your mana variable, get a reference to that, drop it into the top. And if you remember, our value goes from 0 to 1. So the amount that I'm actually going to use for my heal is going to be something like 0 0.15. And then... 
Over here, if it's true, if they have got enough, false being they don't, so we're just gonna leave that blank. So true, drag this out, and then from there, what I need to do now then is I actually need to stop the character movement. I need to disable it and make sure they stop in place. So what I'm gonna do is get a reference to my character movement, and then from here, I'm gonna simply type in disable movement. And what this is gonna do is stop the character moving along just like that. So if they've got enough, disable the movement. And then from here as well, there should also be one that says stop immediately as well. And that's just going to stop them right in their tracks. Otherwise, it's just going to keep them running. So chuck that in there as well. And that's all good. So the next thing that we need to do then now is we actually need to take away the mana from the player if they've got enough. So we've determined whether or not they've got enough. And then from here, what we're going to do is simply set mana and then from here it's simply going to be float minus float and then the original value is going to be the one that we've got already and then the value underneath this is the amount that it's going to use for this ability so for me that's going to be 0 0.15 and then from here what we're going to do now then is we're actually going to increase the number of health so set the health and then from this, to actually heal the health, all we're going to do is just float plus, uh, sorry, float plus float. And then from here at the top, the original value is going to be health once again. And then for the value, the percentage of health we're going to give them is, let's just go with 0 0.15. That way they're trading off the exact same amount of mana as they are health, which is great. And then from here, what we need to do then is we now need to tell it to go into its casting state. So what we're going to do is simply cast, uh, sorry, set casting 1h to true. And that's going to put him into its casting state. And then from here, what we're going to do now then is simply add that quick little delay in there. But before that delay, I actually want to tell it to spawn the particle effect. So what I'm going to do is between the delay and the set, so immediately after it set, starts playing the animation, I am going to spawn an emitter and that is going to be our particle effect. So just type it in, spawn emitter at location. And then for the emitter template, a really cool one that I've actually found for my healing ability is one called the res for the resurrection. It's not the right type of you know effect, but it does look really cool. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So if I drop it into my scene here, just quickly drag and drop, you will see it in a second. Now, once again, my computer is being terribly, terribly slow. So let's just try this again. Drag and drop it into my scene here. You can see we've got this big green blast of you know, energy, which is quite nice, and it blasts out from the bottom, which is really cool. So, we're going to go with that. So, we're going to go into here now then, emit a template, just type in resurrection, just use the same name, and there we go. So, resurrection, that's all good. And we need to fill in these values here. Now, the location, you could have it sort of at the, at the player value, which is sort of in the center, but that's going to be above the ground, so that doesn't work too well for me. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have it spawn at the player's feet. That way it comes out of the ground correctly. But to do that I need to get the location of it. And the way I'm going to do that is get a reference to my mesh and then I'm actually going to get a socket location. And that socket is just going to be at the player's feet. So that's going to be the right foot or the left foot. It's entirely up to you. So just type in for the socket name right foot Make sure you check that with your skeleton as well, otherwise it won't work 100%. I've already checked that, so that's all good, but I'll show you how to do it. Just make sure you're not typing resurrection up there before. Blueprints, character, and then if you just go ahead and open up your skeleton, give it a couple of seconds to load up, and then on the left-hand side, it's going to have a list of all of your bones that we can use. So if we go into our skeleton now, give it a second... And on the left hand side, we've got all of our bones here. And the one that I'm after is right foot, which is here. So there's actually no spaces in that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make sure I get rid of a space in the blueprints inside of the third person character. Otherwise, it won't work. So if we compile this now, that's all good. And then once again, we need to set it back after that little delay. And that's fine. And then we just uncheck that. And then obviously as well, what we also need to do is we need to make sure we enable the character movement again, otherwise the player won't be able to do anything. 
So after this, just drop this over here. There you are. And then instead of disable, what we're going to do is simply enable character or activate character or it's just type in character movement. And then because we've got disable movement in here, you'll also find there is also one to enable it as well. So all I'm going to do quickly is just go through my little list here and I'm going to see if I can find it. I'm not too sure of the name of it off the top of my head. So what I'm going to do is take a quick look through here. So what I want to do is quickly pause the video. I will find the name of this and we will go from there. Okay, so we're back inside of here and I've worked out exactly how we can get it moving again. It's really, really simple. So what we're going to be doing is simply getting the reference to that character movement again. And then from there, what we're going to do is simply set movement mode. And then from here, hook this up to casting one handed. And then for the new movement mode, just set that back to walking. And that's pretty much going to reactivate your character movement, which is really great. So now we're going to be able to walk again. Now, one mistake that I did notice that I made was simply that I actually did a check over here to see whether or not it is less than. Replace this with greater than instead, which is simply just float and then just look for greater than or equal to. Whereas at the start of the video, I actually put in less than. So simply float and then look for greater than or equal to, hook up mana to the first value over here. And then for the bottom value, once again, this is just gonna be 0 0.15 and that's gonna be a little bit and that should run now. So last thing that we need to do then is we actually need to keybind this. So once again, we're going back into our project settings. And then once the project settings have loaded up, we can keybind this new ability to the one key. So basically the player is going to have all of their abilities on the keyboard using the keys one through nine. So what I'm going to do is at the top one, I'm simply going to press the one key and that is that's it. Just use the one key on the keyboard for ability two, type in two, look for keyboard two, and then just go through and do the same for all of these. So three and then four and then five, and then six, and then seven, and then eight, and then last of all, we set this to nine as well. So that's all good now. So if we press play now, and then if we press the one key on the keyboard, if we're moving, it's gonna cast our ability, emitter goes up in the air, and then after a small duration, you can see the player is able to move again, and that is great. So. Also, if you look at the bottom left hand corner, you can see the manner of the player goes down and the health of the player goes up, which is perfect. And not only that, the character can also only use this ability once. But most importantly, we've got this really cool healing ability in here now. Once the players run out of mana, they can't use it anymore. And that is perfect. Anyway, guys, that is pretty much everything for today's video. I hope you have all enjoyed it just as much as I have. Once again, thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This series was made possible by you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help create other series like this, then check out my Patreon page in the link in the description.